So I heard a story on the way here, and it was about a little girl, well, a Korean woman, had an affair. After the Korean War, she had an affair with one of the soldiers. And so she got pregnant, and he went back to the, to the United States, and she never saw him again. Well, in Korea, especially, I, I guess, during that time, that if you had a baby that was mixed, because he would have been half white and half Korean, um, the baby is rejected. And oftentimes, the mother will abort the baby or kill it some way. And so she had the baby, and it was a little girl, and her hair was, was a lighter color, and it was curly. And the, all the other kids and the people could tell that, that she was mixed. And <clears throat> so she was rejected, but the mother didn't, she didn't reject her. She kept her. But after seven years of all, all the rejection, all the pain that the little girl went through and, and the mother, um, she, she just gave her up at seven. And so she, was, she ended up on the streets. Mm -hmm. And they, they used to call her, it's the worst name in the Korean language. That's what her name was. And it was, I think, I th wait, I may not be saying it right. I think it's Tuki. And it means like alien devil. And so she had that stigma over her. But she lived on the streets for two years until she turned nine, <clears throat> and she was able to get into an orphanage. Someone rescued her. And, but there was this one day, now she said she, okay, well, this one day they heard that they were going to have, uh, that, that a couple was coming to adopt a little boy. And so all the orphanage, they were excited. All the kids were excited because there was hope. Somebody was going to get adopted that day. And so the couple came from the United States. And she said this man, she said with the just huge hands, she said it was like Goliath hands, you know. He, he was picking up all the babies, all the little boys. And he, she said she could tell that he had so much love in his heart that he would have, they would have taken all the children. And then she, you know, she was just, because she was, she had bathed the kids and just getting them all ready um, to prepare them for this adoption. And he, he got a glimpse of her. And he went over to her and he touched her face and she said, I had boils. My head was full of lice. And she said that I weighed 30 pounds at nine years old. And how could anyone, you know, want me? And he, when he put his hand on his face, he said, this is the one for me. Mm. This is the one I want. And where she had finally found that home. And how she had been rejected, now this day she was accepted. And became, you know, she had a new life. But she never forgot the day because she had been rejected all those years. It wasn't just one day of her life, but she felt it every single day until that great adoption. And when you think about God accepts us. He, he knows what it's like. Jesus knows what it's like to be despised yeah. and rejected. Wow. But it was so we could be accepted by him. But it was a story that really, it touched my heart because, you know, she understood what it's like to be cast aside or that you don't count, you don't matter. But how he never, he understands when you feel that he understands and knows exactly how you feel. How old was she when she was telling the story? Do you know? She was, well, she was an, an adult at that point, but she was nine, you know, when she was adopted. But you think about how us, how we have all been adopted into that family, and, into the family of God. Wow. So how did you hear her story? I just Over? heard it on the radio today. On the radio? Okay. Yeah. But it was, to me, just a, a powerful, powerful testimony. But it was, when you think about how she <coughs> took time and bathed those kids, not knowing that she was going to be the one that was chosen, that was a, a child that, I mean, she's at boils, lice, you know, malnutritioned, and, and yet, you know, she experienced the true love wow. and grew up the rest of her life knowing what it was like to be accepted and to yeah. be loved. You know, you know, rejection affects your, um, your identity so much. Yes. Mm. You know, her identity at, what, eight years old or whenever her mom... Abandoned her. Seven. Seven. 
from that point on, you know, her, her identity was just messed up, and that's what rejection does. You know, rejection affects your identity. You try to figure out who you are the rest of your life. So therefore, you look f for love in all the wrong places yes. to be accepted, I'm trying to find a place to fit in, you know, to be a part of. And I don't know who rescued her and, and, and took her to the uh, orphanage, right. or, you know, but um, that, that was a blessing within itself, you know, and God was already setting her up. I'm sure out of all those maybe hundreds, I don't know, yes. lots of kids, Yes. surely she wasn't expecting herself to be, you know, adopted. Mm -hmm. Just probably, maybe like the rest of them. Maybe some of them had more hope than her, but I'm thinking from the story, she probably wasn't thinking she would be the one. Well, and most, most of the time when kids are adopted, or when someone's coming to adopt a child, they want a baby. Yeah. And here she was already nine years old and, and didn't even have, wasn't even dreaming for herself. She was so excited that one of these kids, because it, it represented her in a sense, like this is going to be a child that's not going to be an orphan. You know, where mm -hmm. Jesus said, I will not leave you orphans, but I will come to you. I'll be a father to you. You know, I'm not going to reject you. I'm going to be with you always to the end of the world. Like what you saw? Make sure to comment and like below. Hit that subscribe button for more content uploaded weekly.